Good morning. morning. Welcome to Elkton United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Eric, and it's so good to be here with you today. Um, It is both Trinity Sunday and it is Memorial Day weekend as well. Um, You might notice that hymnals and Bibles are back in the pews. We have Paul to thank for that and his uh, grandson, Brendan. They were in here and did all that hard work to get... Uh, all the books back in the pews. It's, a, it's an ongoing process. There's still some left to get in, uh, but on June the 20th, we will be doing congregational singing once again. So I'm really looking forward to that. I don't know about you all. Uh, doing some singing in the church is just going to be a joyous occasion. Um, well, last night I was rudely awakened by what I thought was someone trying to break into my basement Uh, because there was banging on the door that goes from the basement into my kitchen. Well, come to find out, a bird had somehow gotten into the basement and was continuously flying into the basement door. So you can picture Pastor Eric in the middle of the night going down to the basement with a towel, running around the basement trying to catch this bird. I ran around for so long chasing the bird that I eventually wore it out and it couldn't fly anymore and I was able to catch it so, and got it safely outdoors where I released it into the wild. Anyways, if I'm dragging a little bit today, if I'm a little bit, a bit behind the eight ball, that, that, that's why, that's why. It wasn't very funny at the time, but I was successful at getting that bird out of the basement. So bear with me. Now I know that this extended weekend for many of us, we uh, participate in parades and cookouts, and we have much needed time with family and friends. Of course, tomorrow is Memorial Day, and we remember. We remember fallen soldiers and the sacrifices they've made so that we might enjoy an abundant life. We offer thanks We're thankful for brave men and women who have given their lives in the line of duty uh, for others. We also consider, we consider the terrible cost of war that has taken so many of these beloved people from us. And we also pray. We pray for the peace of God to reign over us and to reign in the world. Would you please pray silently with me as we prepare our hearts for worship this morning? Morning. morning. Would you please stand for the call to worship? Great is the Lord. God's greatness is beyond our understanding. Yet God has revealed God's self in Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, we have come to know the absolute love of God. Lift up your hearts and praise the Lord. May God continue to bless God's people with peace. Amen.
As we enter a time of confession, let's please center our hearts. God of majesty and power, how awesome you are to us. The mountains tremble, the seas roar at the sound of your name. Yet you have chosen to come to us in love and tenderness. You have called us to be people who will act in ways of peace and justice in your world. Open our hearts and our spirits, Lord, to hear your word, and having heard, to act in ministries of hope and peace for all your earth. Would you please join me in the prayer of confession in the bulletin? We are so like Nicodemus, Lord. We come to you, hiding in the shadows of our own fears and terrors. We want you to give us peace and hope in our hearts. We want to know that everything will be all right, that the world will cease to be a place of terror and war. We want to be born again in a spirit of hope. But when we come, it is for our own sake and not to learn what you would have us be and do in this world. Forgive our selfishness, Lord. Calm our fears and heal our spirits. Let us truly listen to you so that we may be witnesses to your peace and justice, which you seek for the world. Saturate us with your light and wisdom. Empower us to be those who bring peace, which is not only an absence of war, but peace which promotes an attitude of love. Clear away the clutter in our lives and place us on paths of service to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's love of the world is so great that God sent Jesus that we may truly live lives of peace and hope. Listen with your hearts as well as your ears. God's love is poured out for you that you may have new life in service and witness. Praise be to God. Boy, it's wonderful to see your faces. <laughs> I forgot what you look like. I haven't forgotten, I don't know. Um, I want to give you a chance to sing along with me this morning a little bit. Uh, the, the song is called Your Grace is Enough. And you know, without God's grace, we wouldn't have much. So his grace is definitely enough. So when we get to the part where it's the chorus, it, it's this simple. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Okay. We're not going to rehearse. <laughs> You'll know it when we come to it. Nothing's gonna keep us up. 
Jerry. Our New Testament lesson this morning is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Tomorrow is undoubtedly the worst day of the year for me. Uh, I know there's some bad things in here besides myself. And uh, I don't know your stories. You don't know mine. But I know the stories of my uncle who died on the Indianapolis. He was one of 1,200 that went out into the water after a submarine hit him with three torpedoes. 1,200 went in, 350 came out alive. There's a lot of loss. In Vietnam, I lost two very good friends. And my cousin's oldest son, was just married. He was a career soldier. And for his 
I don't know if it was his third or fourth deployment, he went to Iraq. It was a secret mission to get Saddam Hussein. That went very wrong. I don't call it a holiday. It's not a holiday. Holidays are fun. They're things to, to celebrate and be fun doing. It's the saddest day of the year for me. Always has been. So, I'd like you to bow your heads while, we, while I read this prayer that I wrote last night with tears coming down my face. Father God, as we observe Memorial Day, let us remember over 1.1 million airmen, sailors, and soldiers who have given their lives for this country. Lord, humble us. Make us worthy of their sacrifice. It is said that we are one nation under God. Help us, Lord, to remember that we are free people because of their willingness to serve God and their country. Amen. Things were gone that I
Jerry, thank you for your service, your family service, and everyone else who served that is sitting in this room. Thank you so much. Our gospel lesson this morning is from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. If you are able, would you please stand for the reading of the gospel? Now there is a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from the heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lift, lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Well, we uh, certainly use a lot of big words to try to describe or better understand our God. We use words like indescribable, incomprehensible, unimaginable, omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, and lots of these three and four syllable words. But one of the reasons that our gospel reading today is in our lectionary is because Jesus gives us some insight into the triune nature of our awesome God in our text. However, Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus is more about heart than it is about our mind. It's less about understanding God and more about faith and commitment and practice. Nicodemus is a very learned man uh, who is described as a Pharisee. He's described as a, as a ruler of the Jews. He's described as a great teacher of Israel. And Nicodemus, he presents himself to Jesus as a representative of the religious leaders. And Jesus doesn't seem to really have any problem accepting Nicodemus for who he claims to be. And Nicodemus, as a religious leader and as a scholar, he seems to think he understands who Jesus is as well. Now, by all the evidence, Jesus is a, is a teacher who comes from God. That's what Nicodemus calls him. And Jesus' miracles and amazing works, they provide some proof to Nicodemus of this truth. And if so, if Nicodemus is convinced that Jesus is a teacher who comes from God, why does he come to Jesus in the middle of the night in secret? You know, would he be embarrassed to be seen with Jesus during the day? Is he really interested in Jesus, but not really ready to follow him? 
Is Jesus just a novelty to Nicodemus? Interesting, but he's not really convinced that Jesus is anything more, anything special. We also all know that people can be very convincing, and yet they are nothing more than charlatans and scammers. We have plenty of those in the world today, don't we? And they prey on the vulnerable to steal their money or sell them something that isn't at all what they advertised it to be. And it's tragic that people are like that. Maybe Nicodemus is simply being cautious because he's worried that Jesus is a fraud. This caution, however, has placed limitations on Nicodemus's mind about who Jesus could be. At best, to Nicodemus, he is a teacher who comes from God. At worst, he is a fraud. Nicodemus doesn't consider that Jesus might actually be the Messiah. But Jesus' response to Nicodemus gets right to the heart of the issue immediately. He doesn't beat around the bush. Jesus seems to know what the, the, the questions that Nicodemus needs answered, even if Nicodemus doesn't know he needs to ask those questions. And Jesus tells him that no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Jesus tells him, Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be born again. Unless Nicodemus allows God to change his whole life, he will not be able to truly see God or experience the truth of God. Nicodemus misunderstands Jesus' words, and he, he takes them quite literally. He's a little perplexed. He wonders how someone who is old can literally be born again. But Jesus explains the spiritual nature of rebirth. He explains that those who are reborn in this way become spiritual people, shaped and sustained by the Spirit who bears them. They are transformed. They are changed. See, Nicodemus, he believed in God. As a religious leader, Nicodemus believed he knew much about God. Nicodemus considered the possibility that Jesus was a teacher sent from God. However, do you think Nicodemus could imagine that God the Son was mere inches from him in a conversation with him? Do you think he could have realized how close to God he really was? That he was actually having a conversation with the creator of the universe, the almighty, the eternal and everlasting I don't think Nicodemus realized what he was up against. Nicodemus wasn't ready for that knowledge yet and that understanding yet. He wasn't there yet. However, um, we're fortunate to have the scriptures that we can look further along in the book of John, a little later in the story, and we encounter Nicodemus there too. After Jesus' death, We see in John chapter 19, verse 39, that Nicodemus is accompanying Joseph, one of Jesus' disciples. You see, after the crucifixion, Joseph asks Pontius Pilate for Jesus' body. And he takes it to the tomb for burial preparations. Nicodemus is with him. And together... They embalm the body with myrrh and a mixture of aloes and spices, and they wrap Jesus' body in linen cloth. It seems kind of obscure, but I believe this event signifies that a deep change has occurred in Nicodemus' heart. Jesus has made an enormous impact on his life, so much so that at a great cost to him, with all of those expensive embalming spices, he, he's there for Jesus in, in Jesus' death. This talk of being born again, it's all about an inward heart change. It's recognizing God's deep love for us and God's desire to abide with us. And then choosing to abide with God and serve God and love God. 
It's an inner transformation where we long to be with God and to please God. And so we decide to serve God. This inner transformation enables us to accept the grace and forgiveness that God freely offers to us and then to proclaim the good news of God's grace and love to others. Yes, our God is so far above us. Yes, God is is bigger than any of us can ever fathom or imagine. Yes, God is even more than all the biggest words we can use to describe God. But our God has come to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, able to meet us where we are, We know in the scriptures that Thomas touched uh, Jesus' wounds that he received from the crucifixion. We know that Nicodemus sat inches from him, that Joseph carried the body of Jesus. We know that Moses encountered a burning bush. Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit to preach to the people. The truth is that God has come to us to be with us, even if God is so far above us. Jesus met Nicodemus where he was. Nicodemus may have been haughty, may have felt superior to Jesus, may have considered himself to be more intelligent and disciplined, a better Jew, a more educated man. But Nicodemus, we see, has now humbled himself into the service of God to care for the body of Jesus Christ. This intimate act of caring for the body of Jesus, it isn't a job to Nicodemus. It's an act of love and care, a tender act of profound respect and honor. God comes to us wherever we are, however we need him. Whether we're a learned religious leader like Nicodemus, a tax collector like Zacchaeus, a persecutor of Christians like Paul, God comes to us. We are broken people. We are sinners who have made many mistakes in our lives. God comes to us wherever we are. And the truth is, our God has never needed us. Jesus didn't need Nicodemus. Our triune God is perfect in relationship to God's self. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit share a divine relationship and unity that is perfect beyond any connection or relationship that we can ever imagine. God doesn't need to be loved because God is love. However, the good news is that because God is love, God desires to love us. God wants to love us. It isn't out of any need or lack that God has, but it's simply out of God's loving nature. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit dance together in perfect unity to love us and make a way for us, even though we are disobedient and sinful and broken and rebellious. See, we see in our text today Jesus' patience with Nicodemus. We see that God comes down to meet Nicodemus where he is. We see that Jesus answers the questions that Nicodemus doesn't ask but needs. God loves Nicodemus, and Nicodemus eventually recognizes this love, and Nicodemus loves God back. Folks, that's what this story is all about. We can get into all the complex doctrinal arguments and talk about Trinitarian theology, and all of that's great and good and important at times. But at the heart of it all is faith and commitment in practice. Nicodemus, he comes to faith. Then he commits to follow Jesus. And then he lives it out tenderly there in the tomb. That's our model, too, for being disciples of Jesus Christ. We come to faith. We commit our lives and entrust our lives in service to Jesus. And then we practice it. We go out into the world and we love the world with the love of God. Are you like Nicodemus, who we encounter in our 
gospel text today who thinks Jesus might just be a teacher sent from God, but whose life isn't really all that changed by it? Or are you like the Nicodemus who's been born again and goes to the tomb to love Jesus? I think there's a big difference between the two Nicodemuses we see. We too must be born again of water and the Spirit. The Spirit is among us, like the wind, active and alive, and the Spirit is whipping around everywhere and anywhere, inside our lungs, inside our hearts. Just as God the Son was mere inches from Nicodemus, so too is God with us here today by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do we recognize that God is here? Has that changed us in our hearts? Have we been born again into a life with God forever? God has come to you. Accept God's love and give your love back to God. Would you please pray with me? Almighty God, we see that you have come to us, though you are so far above us. You have chosen to love us. You're such an amazing and awesome God. We can't describe you with words, but here you are. You choose to be with us anyways. And Lord, we thank you for your commitment to us, for all that you've gone through to ensure that we might experience your salvation and your promise of eternal life. And so today, Lord, we commit ourselves to you, commit our lives to you, and trust our lives to you. We know that you are our Savior and that you have reached out to us, and so we just reach back to you, God. Help us in this task, Lord. We, we're broken people. We make mistakes every day. And so we need the power of your Holy Spirit to fill us up that we might be able to be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. So guide us each step, Lord, that we might be faithful to you and faithful not only to love you, but faithful to love the world as you first loved us. Lead us, God, and that we might be your faithful servants. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we come to a time of prayer, I invite you to look over the prayer concerns list in the bulletin. I do have a couple of additions. There was a family graveside service for Ruth Dibert yesterday, so we need to continue to pray for their family. Uh, they are planning a memorial for Ruth here in our church on Saturday, July 24th, so we can look forward to that later this summer. Uh, also, we need to add Marlene Gouch to our list. She is hospitalized with some complications from fluid around her lungs. She is getting better, and her CT scans have showed that her cancer treatments are working, but please continue to keep her in your prayers. Would you now please pray with me? Dear Lord, we come to you this morning in awe that you love us so much, that you sent us your one and only Son, so that we might be saved through him. We come in gratitude that the love between you and your son is the same spirit within us, so that Christ can work through us. We thank you for trusting us with that spirit so that we can live as caretakers with you on this earth, to appreciate your creation and bounty, and to live in gift to one another. Allow your spirit to grow in us so that we become more like you and encourage those around us to grow in your love. We thank you for the example of the Trinity and your never-ending love and patience with us as we live on this earthly ground covered with your abundance. Fill us, Lord, so that your oneness allows Christ to work through us. Lord, we also come before you this morning in remembrance May our hearts and minds turn to all of the brave men and women we have lost while serving in the military. Their selfless service is to be admired as they have lived and worked to protect us, much like you do for us every day. 
May their sacrifice not go unnoticed, and may we remember them with great honor. May we recognize that we often take their service for granted and do not appreciate the freedoms that they so courageously protect. Fill us with gratitude and remind us to keep our current military lifted in prayer, knowing that you have gifted them with fearlessness, discipline, motivation, and skill. May we wrap our arms of appreciation around them as we pray for their safety. Lord, you know that we also have many names on our prayer list and in our hearts. We lift them up to you knowing that they are in your care. Remind us that when we feel hopeless, helpless, and scared, that you are right there with us. Help us to courageously and faithfully hold your hand in times of worry. May your mercy and grace reside in us as we ride the waves of uncertainty and weakness. We know you are capable of so much, and we pray for patience even when our desires seem so desperate. For we know that our prayers may not always be answered according to our plans, but to yours. May we sit still in the uncomfortable, knowing that you are sitting there right beside us. We ask for all of these things in you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it's that time in the service where I share some announcements uh, with you this morning. I want to thank you all for your tithes and offerings. You can continue to give to your church uh, through uh, the church website or by sending your offering into the church office. or uh, We do have an offering plate in the back of the church today as well. Um, I, your faithfulness in giving has been a true blessing to maintain our ministries throughout the pandemic, and I just thank you so much for that. Um, there's also a Wednesday communion service held at 6.15 p.m. on the second and fourth Wednesdays of every month. Uh, all are welcome to attend that service, and I, you know, I recall that John Wesley, he said, practice and celebrate Holy Communion as often as you can, as often as you can. So I encourage you uh, to attend the, our Holy Communion services. Also, Ivan Mahosky is leading a Bible study in Weldon Hall every Tuesday from 10 a.m. to noontime uh, through June the 22nd. Uh, the study examines the meaning of each chapter of the book of Revelation, and I know that they would love to have you. You could hop into that study anytime you would like to. Um, and so I know, too, that Ivan has a Sunday school class that continues to meet throughout the summer. Uh, most you know, Sunday school classes take a break, but, man, Ivan, he's a go-getter. So <laughs> they continue at it. So they meet right after the 8.30 a.m. worship service down in, well, in the chapel down in the chapel. Also, join us uh, for the Elkton Memorial Parade tomorrow. Dress up in all your patriotic attire. The weather's actually supposed to be pretty nice tomorrow. So uh, it's going to clear up, be mid-70s, and uh, the sun will be out. So it's a great time to come and walk with us in the parade. Uh, we'll gather at the church before the, the parade starts. We'll gather at around 9 a.m. to get everything set up and ready. And the parade will officially begin at 11 a.m. Even if you don't plan to walk in the parade tomorrow, stop by and say hi to us. Uh, drop by the church. We'd love to see you. Also, next Sunday, we are recognizing graduates during our worship service. Uh, so there is more information on the insert in your bulletin. But if we're wanting to, we're wanting to honor, some of, as I said, some of our graduates, and the last day... It's supposed to be today to get the pictures and all the information into the church office. I'm sure if you've procrastinated and you're a little late, that they'll accommodate you, you know, tomorrow if you call into the office if you, need, if you need to. Also, Sunday, July 20th, 
is Father's Day, and we are going to have a special treat for you. Uh, the choir is going to be returning to lead us in worship for the first time since the pandemic, so that's an exciting day at both services. We'll have the choir here in our church, and we're also going to begin doing congregational singing as well on that Sunday. So it'll be a real day of celebrating with music and song, and uh, so I hope you'll come out for Father's Day there on uh, June, did I say July? I mean, if I did, I meant June the 20th, so June the 20th. Um, it does look like we have a date for Spirit Lake for our missions trip for the first week of August uh, this year. Um, however, I know there's some challenges when it comes to travel arrangements because all the flights are getting booked up because this pandemic seems to be ending and everybody wants to go on vacation this summer. So um, it's been difficult to figure out our travel arrangements. Uh, so tentatively, we are going to Spirit Lake. Hopefully, pray for us that it all works out. And if you're at all interested in that mission trip, please reach out to Joe Tanner. Uh, he'll make sure it happens for you. Um, and it, I encourage you to talk to him and to encourage him. Uh, but anyways, that, that's all the announcements that I have for you today. Let's close out our worship service this morning as we sing with our hearts, How Great Thou Art. And I know, man, Brian has really revved things up today. <laughs> so uh, Suzette and Paul, they got their work cut out for them, sing it, keeping up with Brian today. So Brian wasn't able to be here, uh, but he pre-recorded everything, and we're so grateful to Brian for doing that. But let's sing together with our hearts.
God of infinite patience, loving presence, and dazzling surprises. Be with us as we leave this place today. Guide and guard our lives and bless our witness that we might witness to your love. We go in peace, seeking ministries of justice and hope. Amen.